Good day fellas, I hope you are ready for your daily dose of skill and what a timing we had for yesterday's YouTube video. We just re released the information how people are enjoying one or another map, <coughs> Redshire, and uh, Wargaming is doing quite some changes. This is probably the biggest patch in a while from Wargaming side. Uh, so kudos to them and it's actually a good one. And now, why skill you are saying kudos to them? I really want to highlight one thing which many people do not uh, uh, realize. Uh, where gaming is working probably at 30 to 50% capacity currently. Uh, not everyone understands that, but Minsk office from our gaming side is gun GG finito, at least from what uh, we know, right? And in the same time, they had an office in the Kiev as well, and that office GG finito, right? So we need to understand this, and we need to understand where gaming is working in very, very, very low capacity, speaking about the staff um, and power of the company, and they manage it to come up with this it's not ideal i was watching the video already but most of the things are looking pretty good so now without further ado let's check out what we gaming has done there will be a lot of new changes in update 1.18 players can expect a brand new map and a number of improvements to well-known locations as well as important adjustments to familiar tanks and a completely new branch of vehicles and you can try it all out on the common test. Learn more about it in this quick video. After a short break, we've gotten back to work on vehicle balance. Remember, these test parameters may change. At the moment, the Kranvan and Emil II are performing too well in battle. So we've decided to make them a little less intimidating while still keeping their shtick. I will translate this. They will cut balls of the Kranwagen and ML2. Sturdy turret and magazine. The Kranwagen will be slower. Okay, looking into all of this, Kranwagen is losing 15 kilometers per hour speed frontally, 6 kilometers per hour speed um, when you are going backwards, so pretty much you will need to use the turbo. Dispersion is increased from 0.36 to 0.4. Uh, dispersion on the turret traverse is getting nerfed, magazine is getting nerfed, you are loading uh, um, longer and since you are loading low the, uh, longer, your DPM is decreased. speed to make it more of a trench vehicle. Gun handling is now less comfortable and the magazine takes longer to reload. This will make the tank less forgiving of mistakes. The Emil II has undergone similar changes, like its tier 10 counterpart. Let's see quickly. Uh, forward speed. Before it was 56, now it's 40. Uh, top speed backwards instead of 18, 12. Uh, and speaking about the gun dispersion increased, so pretty much it's less accurate. Uh, you pretty much won't be able to make a snapshots that easily. Um, and you are going to reload for a long time. Now... Every single Kranwagen owner right here, listen for me very, very, very loud and clear. If you are a marker, you want to put Kranwagen to the certain level. If you are getting, if you want to get Mark of Excellence up to the third Mark of Excellence, but you cannot be bothered to grind yourself up to 95, make sure to get up to 90. So couple of weeks when this tank will be nerfed, expectation values will be low and you will get Mark of Excellence in one game. This is how Mark of Excellence uh, is working. Same goes for ML2. Prepare for this mark. And it's completely fine if you are not uh, um, that experienced so to get up to 90%. Get it to the 80% and you will get the second mark of excellence. Keep this in mind, this is very very important thing to say. The tank has now lost some of its dynamics and gun stats. The performance of the French heavy tanks with the cyclic guns has lagged slightly behind the competition. <laughs> now, no with these shit. upcoming changes, it will be easier for them to survive on the battlefield. This applies to all tiers except tier 9. The AMX M4 MLE 50. AMX, M <coughs> AMX tier 9, it is absolutely amazing tank. They are pretty much um, nerfing traverse speed. 
uh, but they are giving more accuracy. I don't know, is it a good, I don't know, is it a nerf? T1 has been competitive from the start, because so only really small changes have been mean... made to its characteristics. However, the tier 10 tank has undergone dramatic changes. The vehicle sides are now thicker and its HP is higher. The stabilization and penetration of both guns have been improved. The standard shells for the 120 mm gun and the special shells for the 130 mm now offer better penetration. At the same time, a better penetration standard shell okay let's see very very quickly side armor um, is going to be harder to penetrate the side good hit points from 2.2 to 2.4 good whole traverse speed four degrees nerf yeah it's okay um, you can always if you are feeling extremely slow you can always use the rotation mechanism uh, if you really want to right dispersion uh, whenever you are moving um you are getting some buffs here that's great now looking into 130 millimeters gun it's more accurate it's reloading quicker nice uh gold is getting more penetration shell velocity is quicker and shell velocity is quicker that's pretty damn nice news um and it looks like uh there is not going to be any point not to shoot the gold because if i'm not mistaken the gold ap uh this tank has gold ap and gold ap will he will be faster come on um 120 millimeters gun it is getting better dpm it is getting just tiny touch better a uh, penetration with a standard shell right by six you won't even feel it shell velocity is decreased shell velocity decreased and shell velocity decreased okay fair enough for the 120 millimeter gun and the special shells for the 130 millimeter now offer better penetration at the same time the hull traverse speed has been slightly decreased for the tier 8 AMX 65T, gun dispersion, durability, and cross. Okay, uh, let's check out what is happening for AMX 65T. This tank is a gem of the world of tanks. If you want to hate yourself, you want to play with this vehicle and you will feel like whatever problems you have, they are not existing because this vehicle is like literally walking problem. So looking into all of this, 50 HP useless, it's not changing anything. Reload time, it is just tiny touch, reloading tiny touch quicker, better aim time, just tiny touch better dispersion and DPM increased a bit. Um, it's pretty much mounting extra armor of that on the tank if I I can say so, right? Uh, is it going to be a game changer? I doubt it, but we'll see. Sink capacity have all increased. It will also be easier for the tier seven vehicle to play on the front line, thanks to. I do not know what kind of armor value as this tank had before because for me it's it is showing absolutely nothing to be fair with you. You know what what they could have done they could say before it was 140 now it's 200 before it was 130 now it's 195 you know uh, they could do that uh, but it is how it is all and all I really do not know how much of the change this tank uh, to its received improved looking frontal into turret this. armor and increased hit points. Moreover, the stats of the entire main branch of American heavy tanks have changed. The only exception is the T110E5, which has shown decent performance since the last rebalance. The M103 is now slightly less maneuverable. I really want to say that E5 is one of the lowest win ratio uh, having tanks nowadays and I'm not even joking, I truly mean it. But okay, <laughs> it's performing as intended. Um, okay, M103, hit points, more HP, great. Uh, traverse speed changing nothing, uh, it's more accurate, great. Uh, traverse speed changes nothing, more accurate, good. Um, Traverse speed of the turret. Wow, this is this is quite a big nerf to be fair with you. It's like 33% nerf how fast the turret is turning. So yeah. Okay, but it's more accurate. Fine. But its hit points and gun stabilization have improved. The T32 will T32 is losing view range but getting accuracy. Aiming time, reload time, uh, better penetration with the standards, better penetration with gold, which still sucks to be fair with you. And it's becoming just tiny touch more accurate and it can turn a bit quicker. Nice. Or hit and penetrate easier. Also the M3 Stewart T6 medium T1. 
Okay. Let's see what they have done for uh, for Jeez. the lower tiers. Uh, tier 4 is getting a bit of the buff. I know shit about this tank, I apologize. And I do not know anything about the tier um, 3 as well. T1 for, for heavy that. And M6. Okay, for the M6 and T1 heavy. Fellas, uh, whenever the update will come live, since those tanks got buffed tiny touch, what you need to keep in mind if you want to get Mark of Excellence on the tanks you need to play in the first day, because you will play with better tank with all the expectation values. I really want to highlight this. Same goes for T32, same goes for M103 and so on. Tanks which are getting buffed and if you want to finish Mark of Excellence in... in kind of easy mode you need to play on the first day whenever it's getting buffed so you will get better score overall it's important thing to say now m6 hit points okay view range okay reverse speed okay aiming speed um, buffed as well reload time buffed as well nice now t1 hit points view range nice um backward speed nice yep everything is looking fine Six i mean they are buffing all those times. A boost on the other hand, the T29 now takes longer to aim. F in the chat for the T29 lever, so dear fellas, it looks like you might need to find another toy to play with. So T29 view range decreased, driver speed whenever you are turning decreased, and now the, speaking about the gun, uh, 0.4 seconds you will feel it, uh, speaking about the aim, reload time increased by 2 seconds, ay 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 imagine that, it's like you losing grammar, and aiming slower, and yeah, unfortunate, and being slower and seeing less. But you still have the same armor. Load and traverse. The M44, an American tier 6 SPG, will cause less damage. Someone in Wargaming actually has brain, fellas. Uh, thank you very much from the all World of Tanks community and obviously take everything with a bit of the um, with a bit of the grain of salt, you know. I met many many people overall in Wargaming gaming over the years and the thing is all of them are absolutely amazing people, right? I met them, I spoke with them and so on so on. Uh, but <coughs> but once again there is not many things what one person can do. For example, if someone is in one team which is not responsible for balance, he cannot change the things like this. So whoever was working on the changing things, speaking about the balancing vehicles, kudos to you. Uh, nice, M44 ball cut. Lately I played with a tier 6. That wasn't enjoyable, I can promise you that. Now the differences between the tier 6 tank and its tier 7 counterpart will be much more evident. Good. A number of other mid-tier vehicles have also been rebalanced. The characteristics of the KV-1S, M4A3 E8 Sherman, Type 58, TVP VTU, and two French tank destroyers will improve. Many of these vehicles are already popular among newcomers, which will help make their game journey smoother. At the same time, several mid-tier vehicles have lost some... Okay, who is getting nerfed? Um, Polish tier 7 um, is getting nerfed. In my opinion, that was a hidden gem and I said that in many YouTube videos which I had with this tank. We have the Boogie, we have the Škoda, we have BDR, we have T67 and we have lower tier shitters. Some of their performance. And for the sake of consistency, we've made a few changes to other vehicles as well. You can read more about these changes in the article on the game portal. The winning for map balancing. from Recon Mission Season 1 is ready to enter random battles. Meet the outpost. On this map, you'll be forced to fight nose-to-nose -nose in the town while tanking to your heart's content. Or you can choose to fight for the fortress on the hill. It's a risky ascent, but if successful, you'll have control over a significant part of the map. Further on in the swamps, you'll be able to easily set up ambushes and fight in fast vehicles. The old battlefields have also received some attention. 
14 maps rebalanced. Now, from what I can tell, people actually enjoy this map um, overall night. Um, and the most important thing which I do not see or do I see? Wait a second. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Uh, what I really want to say, there was a map who was absolutely Redshire. It is there. Redshire was hated from one spawn and looks like where gaming is switching the things. Um, if you haven't seen the community feedback on the maps which we have in the game, check out yesterday's YouTube video. It was absolutely amazing. Update 1.18 features a number of changes to existing maps. On Moravanka, the left flank has significantly improved. Small hills and buildings now provide much more cover. Good. This part of the map has become more welcoming for slow, heavily armored vehicles. Good. In the encounter battle mode, the location of the base has also been changed. This will balance both teams' ability to control the area. Good. In Berlin, changes to the urban area aim to strengthen the position of the right team. The balcony in square C6 has been reworked. This has been done to match the balcony on the opposite side. In addition, the map has been removed from encounter battles. The changes Thank in you. Here aim to balance the sides in favor of the upper team. Really? The passage to the airship is now better protected against fire from other directions. It's now... Who, whoever is working on this, they are listening, but they, are, they have a bit of the lag, fellas. We were saying this for years, for literally years, fellas. Can you imagine that? Much safer for scouts to depart from D6. The assault mode has been updated in favor nice. of defense. The base and spawn points of both teams have shifted. Pearl Good. River has also become more balanced. When playing from the lower spawn point, players can now get to the central passage faster, and the passage itself has become wider. There's also a new well-defended position here. The terrain on Siegfried Line has been changed slightly. Now the hill in square A7 is flatter. Moreover, the assault mode base and spawn points have moved a bit. On Lakeville, Good. one of the most popular positions for light tanks has been improved. Now you can spot enemies in the center from one side of the house and in the city from the other. The central <laughs> hill in the canyon has become easily accessible from both spawn points. This is a On Corellia, change. selective improvements have been made to the shapes and positions of several boulders. This will secure flanking from the upper base. Ghost Town. Players in heavy vehicles will feel the most significant improvements here. The major clash area is now covered against long-range fire. Tank destroyers that used to camp far from the center of events should look for new positions. Note that this change will affect players on both sides. The Paris map now features a new terrace in the corner of a house in square H7. This will make it harder for enemies in E3 to hit vehicles crossing the street. On Glacier, the path to the aircraft carrier has become much safer, and there is now... <coughs> Here the tanks can play the game! Can you imagine? Holy bananas, fellas! Probably one of the best patches we ever had in World of Tanks. More cover in both spawn areas. Artillery from the lower base is now able to assist allies on serpentine roads. This has been updated to match the conditions on the other side. On the Abbey map, there's no longer the option to hoist up in square E5. On El Halouf, changes have been made to square A1. Previously, only the upper team could comfortably play hull down here. Now, thanks to the new boulder, the position benefits both sides equally. The updates to Serene Coast are minor, but still positive. In the past, if you fell into the water, it was impossible to get out. This has now changed. And finally, Himmelsdorf. The castle and surrounding terrain are now more symmetrical. This way, the upper team will be as comfortable here as the lower team. Moreover, it's now easier to move and play hull down in squares D9 to E9. The new Italian tank destroyers will also feel comfortable tanking here, but more on that later. For now, let's talk about the matchmaker. To improve your battle experience, we're introducing some new rules for balancing light tanks and artillery. 
First of all, there are new restrictions to balance the number of light tracked and wheeled vehicles. The matchmaker will now be stricter when balancing light tanks between teams. Pay attention at this. Um, in the past, or I suppose to say currently, there is a possibility to get two light tanks in uh, in one team and one light in another team. In most of the maps, it doesn't matter unless you are getting a good map for light tanks, which are, let's say, five to ten maps, which are actually good for light tanks. And will always aim to put the same number of these... And this is still wrong for gaming. You're not getting it. Manticore is not equal for a Sheridan. One team is getting Sheridan in the Prokurovka, another team is getting Manticore. Manticore is better than Sheridan for spotting. Sheridan is get better for doing damage. So this is still not a really good fix, to be completely honest with you. Vehicles on each team. This means that there will be far fewer battles between teams with uneven numbers of light tanks. Wheeled vehicles will now be more strictly balanced as well, and there will be a limit of one wheeled tank per team. Who could imagine that, fellas? Who could imagine that seven wheeled vehicles in one team is not good for a game? Nice, beautiful. To support these changes and avoid a significant increase in waiting time for light tanks in a platoon, we are also introducing a limit of no more than one light tank in a platoon from tier seven onward. <clears throat> Lovers of the AMAX1357 who used to play in platoon. It was nice knowing you. No more of this fun, but I can understand why it's made. So unlucky. We're still experimenting with these restrictions, so our developers will be keeping a close eye on the matchmaker's stability, queue fluctuations, and waiting times, then make any necessary adjustments. The second important change concerns the number of SPGs per team. The majority of battles will now have zero to two SPGs per... <sighs> Can I offer you a uh, holy banana for gaming for this? Three artists? Is no bueno. We was crying about this for years. Here you go. Take a banana and enjoy it. Beautiful. Team. Starting with update 1.18, the matchmaker will aim to keep the number of battles with three SPGs per team to an absolute minimum. The number of battles with three SPGs will greatly depend on the time of day and day of the week, as well as the number of artillery players waiting in the queue, among other things. In other words, if there is going to be a lot of art players waiting, you will get three artists anyways, but it's going to be so much more here than it is nowadays. Good. Nevertheless, the matchmaker will always try to limit the number of SPGs on a team to one or two or none at all. If you're having trouble finding your way around the maps, Try the updated scenarios in topography. The vehicle routes and target positions are now even more consistent with the realities of random battles. Learn to play smart with topography. If you're a total newbie, be sure to try out Tank Academy right after completing the initial tutorial. The Academy right after completing. Okay. Um Check this out, this is very important thing. Keep an eye on expectation values of the test 5 double penetrator or list. As you can see, you will be able to get those tanks as a rental tanks. So if you are if you are a newer player, you will be excuse you will be able to test the tanks out that's a great thing but if you are marking it and you are struggling to get mark of excellence on those vehicles remember there is index page where you can see expectation values and mark of excellence values and if you will see significant dip what that basically means it's your time to take this tank out and to play with it because newer players they are not going to perform as great as experienced players it's just how it goes completing the initial tutorial this series of missions will gradually introduce you to the various features of the random battles gameplay and best of all you'll get useful rewards 
We've made some visual changes that will bring together the overall tone of the improvements in a number of ways. Now, destroying the tracks on any tank in the game will look as impressive as it does on the Yo tanks. Nice. The tracks work as a separate physical model. They react to objects around them and behave like they would in real life. This configuration significantly affects performance. It should only be enabled if your PC supports a good frame rate in the game and it will only be enabled by default with the high and ultra settings. Last but not least, the Italian tank destroyers. Get ready for a unique branch of TDs featuring armor, turrets, and very interesting guns. Their characteristics are still being tested and may change, but it's already clear that these vehicles have real character. The Tier 5 and Tier 6 vehicles are classic tank destroyers that hark back to the German roots of the Italian tank industry. Tier 7 is where the special treats of the line truly start to emerge. These vehicles have turrets with limited traverse angles and excellent gun elevation and depression angles. Their impressive armor allows them to really show off their full potential. The tank allows them to really show off their full potential. Their impressive armor Okay, uh, 176 as a tier 7 is pretty damn huge to be fair with you. Against the higher tiers it doesn't mean shit, but against the lower tiers it's great. And look at this, 350, even people with a spamming full gold they would struggle. Even 266, if you are hold down you can show a big fat middle finger. But allows them to really show off their full potential. The tanks also have a very unusual magazine, with long reloading times for each shell, but speedy reloading for the whole magazine. You're faced with a hybrid of a magazine and cyclical firing. However, further down the line, the vehicle's boosted armor transforms them into... 400, 400, 300, okay. This is a tier 8 if I'm not mistaken, right? It can get penetrated into the face. Um, and it can kind of get penetrated into the upper plate, but lower plate is 203, so it's kind of Chrysler-ish. Full-fledged assault TDs. In addition to its impressive armor, the Tier 8 vehicle has a sloped turret ring that allows it to keep a low profile and lower its gun just as well when traversing the turret. At Tier 9, this feature is even more striking. Here, the turret... Uh, it has horns, so you can penetrate it in the horns. This is not looking that uh, epic, to be completely honest with you, but lower plate 200 millimeters, so it's relatively easy to penetrate. Pretty much, you will need to sit hold down with them. It's, it's pretty much going to be... Uh, maybe it's rude to say another Kranwagen, but kranwagen niche. It occupies the majority of the frontal projection, which will come in handy when utilizing gun elevation and depression angles. The 127mm gun continues the magazine tradition. The Contra Caro 1 Mark II will both prepare you for Tier 10 and quickly become one of the top vehicles in your garage. Bold claim. And at the end of the labyrinth, the Minotaur awaits. A large and sturdy turret. 450 degrees angle, 337 millimeters of the, um, of the um, cupolas. At least it looks like it and 225. Okay, it looks like a badger in a way, you know. If you are not in ideal position, it's going to be GG. But if you are in ideal position, it's turret. going to be nice. Well sloped armor, 10 degrees of gun depression. And an arc of fire covering 90 degrees. Even a 5-shell magazine dealing 530 HP of damage each, the entire magazine may reload very quickly, but the individual shells take a long time. Think of it as a regular gun with an incredibly quick reloading time, but a tolerable penalty of 24 seconds every 5 shots. And to spice it all up, great penetration. The Contacaro 3 Minotauro can provide impressive fire support or it can lead the attack and break through enemy defenses with its strong head. Mm -hmm. The bull lowers its horns, stomps the ground with its hoof, and the enemy better step aside. You can test this vehicle and all the other changes during the common test. Okay, boys, uh, a huge news for World of Tanks all and all. I think I said everything what I really wanted to say and uh, I showed everything for you. Um, 
It is one of the best patches where gaming did in a long time. And once again, keep this in mind, it is like with a lower capacity speaking about the people um, working on the project, working on the game. So, uh, G, bloody G. Um, it is, it is very, very good change. The weak tanks are getting buffed, the strong tanks are getting nerfed. Um, but the thing is, it's not perfection. There is still some places to improve, obviously. Um, for example, the fjords map, if I'm not mistaken, there is some things which could be done and so on, so on. Or Fisherman's Bay here with flank is literally sucking up a pee. Um, but this is the step to the right direction in my humble opinion. So GG to Wargaming and you know me fellas, whenever Wargaming is doing something bad I will say GG and when Wargaming will mess up I will say bad Wargaming, bad Wargaming. But in this kind of situation, GG. Uh, leave your comment down below what do you think about those changes and maybe it is some, not maybe, I think this is for a greater good of the game. Also, I had an idea about the, about doing the map guides and I will start with older maps, how to play them. So I won't touch the newer maps yet. Um, why so? Because I need to play some games to figure out exactly how to play them and then we can do some things. So thank you very much for watching fellas. I hope you had a great time and I hope you enjoyed yourself remember we have a new survey going on feel free to um, complete it it is a short one like five minutes or so and thank you very much for watching that was your daily dose of skill and see you very very soon skill is out for today peace